You are listening to Section 16, Fables 301 to 312 of 300 Aesop's Fables, translated by George Filer Townsend. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. Recording by Michael Armenta 301. The Lion and the Shepherd A lion, roaming through a forest, trod upon a thorn. Soon afterward, he came up to a shepherd and fawned upon him, wagging his tail, as if to say, I am a suppliant and seek your aid. The shepherd boldly examined the beast, discovered the thorn, and, placing his paw upon his lap, pulled it out. Thus relieved of his pain, the lion returned into the forest. Some time after, the shepherd, being imprisoned on a false accusation, was condemned to be cast to the lions. But when the lion was released from his cage, he recognized the shepherd as the man who healed him and instead of attacking him, approached and placed his foot upon his lap. The king, as soon as he heard the tale, ordered the lion to be set free again in the forest, and the shepherd to be pardoned and restored to his friends. 302. The Camel and Jupiter The Camel when he saw the bull adorned with horns, envied him, and wished that he himself could obtain the same honors. He went to Jupiter, and besought him to give him horns. Jupiter, vexed at his request, because he was not satisfied with his size and strength of body, and desired yet more, not only refused to give him horns, but even deprived him of a portion of his ears. 303. <clears throat> the Panther and the Shepherds A panther, by some mischance, fell into a pit. The shepherds discovered him, and some threw sticks at him and pelted him with stones, while others moved with compassion towards one about to die, even though no one should hurt him, threw in some food to prolong his life. At night he returned home, not dreaming of any danger, but supposing that on the morrow they would find him dead. The panther, however, when he had recruited his feeble strength, freed himself with a sudden bound from the pit, and hastened to his den, with rapid steps. After a few days he came forth and slaughtered the cattle, and, killing the shepherds who had attacked him, raged with angry fury. Then they who had spared his life, fearing for their safety, surrendered to him their flocks, and begged only for their lives. To them the panther made this reply. I remember alike those who sought my life with stones, and those who gave me food aside, therefore your fears. I return as an enemy only to those who injured me. 304. The Ass and the Charger An ass congratulated a horse on being so ungrudgingly and carefully provided for, while he himself had scarcely enough to eat, and not even that without hard work. But when war broke out, a heavily armed soldier mounted the horse, and, riding him to the charge, rushed into the very midst of the enemy. The horse was wounded and fell dead on the battlefield. Then the ass, seeing all these things, changed his mind and commiserated the horse. 305. The Eagle and His Captor An eagle was once captured by a man 
who immediately clipped his wings and put him into his poultry yard with the other birds, at which treatment the eagle was weighed down with grief. Later, another neighbor purchased him and allowed his feathers to grow again. The eagle took flight, and, pouncing upon a hare, brought it at once as an offering to his benefactor. The fox, seeing this, exclaimed, Do not cultivate the favor of this man, but of your former owner, lest he should again hunt for you, and deprive you a second time of your wings. 306. The Bald Man and the Fly A fly bit the bare head of a bald man, who, endeavoring to destroy it, gave himself a heavy slap. Escaping, the fly said mockingly, You, who have wished to revenge, even with death, the prick of a tiny insect, see what you have done to yourself to add insult to injury. The bald man replied, I can easily make peace with myself, because I know there was no intention to hurt. But you, an ill-favored and contemptible insect who delights in sucking human blood, I wish that I could have killed you, even if I had incurred a heavier penalty. 307. The Olive Tree and the Fig Tree The olive tree ridiculed the fig tree, because, while she was green all the year round, the fig tree changed its leaves with the seasons. A shower of snow fell upon them, and, finding the olive full of foliage, it settled upon its branches and broke them down with its weight, at once despoiling it of its beauty and killing the tree. But, finding the fig tree denuded of leaves, the snow fell through to the ground and did not injure at all. 308. The Eagle and the Kite An eagle, overwhelmed with sorrow, sat upon the branches of a tree in company with a kite. Why, said the kite, do I see you with such a rueful look? I seek, she replied, a mate suitable for me, and I am not able to find one. Take me, returned the kite. I am much stronger than you are. Why, are you able to secure the means of living by your plunder? Well, I have often caught and carried away an ostrich in my talons. The eagle, persuaded by these words, accepted him as her mate. Shortly after the nuptials, the eagle said, Fly off and bring me back the ostrich you promised me. The kite, soaring aloft into the air, brought back the shabbiest possible mouse, stinking from the length of time it had lain about the fields. Is this, said the eagle, the faithful fulfillment of your promise to me? The kite replied, That I might attain your royal hand, there is nothing that I would not have promised, however much I knew that I must fail in the performance. 309. The Ass and the Driver An ass, being driven along a high road, suddenly started off and bolted to the brink of a deep precipice. While he was in the act of throwing himself over, his owner seized him by the tail, endeavoring to pull him back. When the ass persisted in his effort, the man let him go, and said, Conquer, but conquer to your cost. 310. The Thrush and the Fowler A thrush was feeding on a myrtle tree, and did not move from it because its berries were so delicious. A fowler observed her staying so long in one spot, and, had
having well bird-limed his reeds, caught her. The thrush, being at the point of death, exclaimed, O oh, foolish creature that I am! For the sake of a little pleasant food, I have deprived myself of my life. 311. The Rose and the Amaranth An amaranth, placed in a garden near a rose tree, thus addressed it, What a lovely flower is the rose, a favorite alike with gods and with men. I envy you your beauty and your perfume. The rose replied, I indeed, dear amaranth, flourish, but for a brief season. If no cruel hand pluck me from my stem, yet I must perish by an early doom. But thou art a mortal, and dost never fade, but bloomest for ever in renewed youth. 312. The Frog's Complaint Against the Sun Once upon a time, when the sun announced his intention to take a wife, the frogs lifted up their voices in clamor to the sky. Jupiter, disturbed by the noise of their croaking, inquired the cause of their complaint. One of them said, The sun, now while he is single, parches up the marsh and compels us to die miserably in our arid homes. What will be our future condition if he should beget other sons? End of section 16 End of 300 Aesop's Fables Translated by George Filer Townsend This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org